Welcome back to Mic Up or Shut Up. Yes, you are on the right channel. We decided to change things up a little bit. This is Reagan, and I'm here with my husband, Bodie, my brother, Chris, and his wife, Angie. This is episode 11. And Chris told me to tell y'all that his movie picks are awesome. I disagree. Yes, yes, they are definitely not awesome. Not even a little bit. Well, I can't believe he did not yeah. like Return of the Living Dead, though. Right. Because that is a classic movie believe. from the 80s. It's oh, like so a classic how on piece earth, of crap. How on earth is that a classic movie? Literally, if you go online, it literally it was shown uh, for one of the Fandango movie things where they bring it back into the theater. That doesn't even matter. The point is, last week I recommended The Return of the Living Dead, a zombie movie. And they watched it. Reagan and Bodie decided to watch it. They had never seen it. And they hated it. Correct. Oh, yeah. The Return of the Living Dead is known by many people to be one of the greatest zombie movies ever made. I just want to point that out. Where are these people? But it's not scary, yes. though. It's a, it's well, a that, horror it, it comedy. It wasn't supposed to no, be it wasn't scary. Supposed and to, it yeah. was, it, if it's a horror comedy, it's also supposed to be funny. Yeah, it was kind of funny and hilarious. There was nothing. It was bad makeup, bad acting, bad jokes. Everything was bad, bad, bad. Wow. I'm I mean, I am actually, I am actually flabbergasted. When you said you were going to watch it, I thought finally they're going to say a movie recommendation that uh, worked for me. I am, I am genuinely surprised that yeah. you didn't like it. It was, I, yeah. I did enjoy the titties. Well, of course, that's of course. that's that's the bright spot of the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, Movies. but na now we've decided we really don't ever want to watch another one of his recommendations. I think that we've gone above and beyond to try. Right. Because everything that he's recommended, we've watched Cold in July. We've watched The Secretary. We've watched Return of the Living Dead. We've watched all of this doo-doo, and it's been <laughs> painful. Cold in, Ju in July, I'd say, was mediocre. So, I mean, of all three, at least, <laughs> that was okay. Oh, I'm hurt. Just, like, just admit. I need pain just medication. Just agree to disagree. That's all you got to do. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, just don't agree to disagree because one of this side of the argument is completely wrong. <laughs> yes, I agree with that statement. <laughs> one side is completely wrong. Like one of his movie recommendations that he did for, I did not like the movie, and he was like, "Okay," and the, but I told him why I didn't like the which movie. Which one? Ravenous. Oh. We keep it, telling him why because it's shit. Well, it's well, not that I don't think that his movies are shit. It's just not the kind of movies that I like to watch. I respect everybody's desire to watch a movie. So, but I, I like did, to watch good I did movies. talk about why the makeup and the the the, the videography was trash. <laughs> did you not think that the, no, the not gore at all. and the blood and the I, guts was horribly done? Okay, I thought first it was of all, great. the zombie known as the tar zombie. You know the one that yes, you know, yes. That is CGI. A lot of, no, terrible. that is not CGI. It's not CGI at no all. Claymation is what it looked like. No, it was a man in a suit. It was literally a man in a suit. And that zombie is very famous. That's the most famous zombie from a movie. Most people would consider that to be one of the coolest zombies put on film. And you're saying doo doo. It looked like a cartoon on Saturday morning. All well, right. one of the characters right. was somebody clearly, drew him with a Crayola. Okay. <laughs> one of the girls was clearly sleeping with the director because she couldn't. Act worth them. She couldn't act out of a paper bag. I mean, it was terrible. Like she clearly got her way into that movie Which by sleeping with somebody. I don't know one of them. Oh, okay. Was it the one who her All of them were no? terrible. No, all it them, wasn't her. The acting and the, the, was it the girlfriend. I, mean, I think like, it's the girlfriend. All of the things that you say that you require yes. for a good movie, yeah. camera angles and yeah, this, none of that. It was all garbage. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I'm I, I'm before. I really am. I'm I don't really even know am what surprised he didn't like it. I and I know I keep you. saying that, but I truly am. Because I took it at face value. It's a horror movie from the 80s. No, no. I can enjoy oh, movies from the 80s a, that okay. are not it's as good zombie. as they are now. It's a but... <laughs> okay, because if you take into account when it was made, then maybe it's a little bit better. Because Maximum Overdrive, I thought was good. Then I watched it, and then I realized it was absolutely terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. But it's also because of the age that it was made. Yeah. You know, the, the date date of the movie was it, really bad. I mean, you could tell the movie was made in the 80s, but I, I, I don't know what to say. I love the movie. I don't know what the hell you people are talking about. It's like, I think it's funny. I think it's funny. Just, I think but you're just like, disagreeing just to disagree. It's like Annie. At this point. I don't think I would. At this your point. Favorite, I don't think I would. Your favorite like, movies? I loved Annie growing up. Like, I, we even went and saw it again when it came back out in the movie theaters. And when I watched it again, I was like, 
what in the hell was I thinking? This movie is horrible. What movie? Annie. No, I it's can't. not horrible. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I loved <laughs> it, just like you loved Maximum Mojo. No, I, I did, and then I realized no, I that's remembered what I'm saying. it bad. I remember it was not a good movie completely different than what right. it is. And I was like, I cannot watch this movie. And it could be Chris's influence on me, too. That's probably what it is. He has warped your mind. Look. But it's strange, though. My memory of that movie no, was that, that it was better than what it right, was. That is mm-hmm. correct. Yeah. And when I watched it again the other night, I was like, oh, my gosh. This is terrible. I've, I've had many movies that, unfortunately, fell that fell by the yeah. side because you know well when you're a little kid you yeah, don't, you have don't know same, any better yeah, yeah i yeah. guess and you're like oh that's, wow this is cool look exactly. there's a gun on a four-wheeler shooting by itself yep. it's great yep <laughs> but not at all great at I've all never seen it was that. really bad you don't need to no <laughs> and there was no movie and you know what's so. crazy is uh stephen king constantly criticizing people that take his work and turn it into movies always criticized critical of the movies he fucking directed that movie did you know that he directed that movie it himself. Makes perfect oh, sense. we did see we did see that he was yeah. the director so, of that movie. So uh, he can't complain. Well, How about what other I people want, have done. I want you to take that and you take that information that you just said, and then apply it to what I found out yesterday on Twitter. Stephen King posted on X, yes, and said that Joe Biden is the best president this country has ever had in history. <laughs> So that just Stephen shows, King said that. Well, that's why he writes such sick books because the dude he's is sick. crazy. No, he's a yeah. moron. He's a moron. He's a moron. Yeah. That's he because, is a full blown moron. Have you ever looked so at rich. him? He's so rich, he has no clue of what's going on in the real world. That's really always, no oh. one with that amount of money should look like he does. He doesn't have to look means. like a big nerd. He he has the money to have a full makeover. I don't know. He, your brother looks like him a little bit. Chris doesn't have the money. Glasses, he has. Beard, Punch your fucking right? tongue. He looks nothing like Stephen King. Chris does, a does like Stephen not King. have the money Stephen King does. Well, that's true. That is unfortunate. Well, you know, it's I don't look like Stephen King, but she used to always tell me, well, b- before I had a beard, before I had a beard, she used to constantly tell me that I look like Seth Green. And a I lot of people like, have told you I that. I was like, what? There, I, <laughs> Seth Green has red hair and he does not wear glasses. So I don't see where the I wasn't the only person to tell you that though. Exactly. So the weird thing is, one day I'm at Walgreens by myself. She's not there. Girl behind the counter, never seen her before. Right. So I'm checking out, and she says to me, "You know who you look like?" I don't know who. Seth Green. And I was like, "Well, (laughs) goddamn it! I guess I do look like Seth Green." Although I don't see it. I don't see it either. So it's weird. I don't see it anymore. You know who I get? I get Dave Bautista. WWE. Sure, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Drax. Yeah. So do you think that works or no? No. no. Yeah. That's who I got at work Dave the other Bautista day. Somebody said, I didn't like know Dave Bautista brain. worked here. I said, I don't even know who that is. Who you, what are you talking about? I didn't even know who he was. I had to Google him and okay. look. And I was like, eh. I mean, we both got a shaved head and we're kind of fat. Yeah. I mean, it's whatever, you yeah. know. I don't he was think in it... Knock at the Cabin, right? Yes. Oh, is he the actor yes. guy? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but no. Wow. I don't think you look at him at all. No. No? Not Mm-mm. at all? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Right. Okay, so who do you get? <laughs> I get nobody. Mm. Me either. Sandra Bullock. No, why do you think that? <laughs> Sandra Bullock. I don't. I don't. I was just throwing the name out you there. You said that before. I think somebody said that before, and I was well, like, because anybody that? with a ponytail is Sandra Bullock. I don't wear ponytails. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we're talking about actors, I'm gonna. Uh, possibly blow everybody's mind by revealing something about Christopher Walken that apparently a lot of people don't know Uh, and I have proof to back it up so you know Chris Walken has a very unusual way of speaking I mean that is his that is his trademark right you know which I love it don't get me wrong I love it but it's clearly made up nobody talks that way right and you can watch interviews and you can watch uh, YouTube videos all claiming that in fact that is the real way that Christopher Walken speaks, that he's not putting on an act. But that's a lie. And I can prove it, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, there was a movie uh, that came out in the 70s, I believe, called The Sentinel. And it was his first, you know, acting gig in a, in a real movie. And also it was the first acting gig for uh, Jeff Goldblum. Just... So he only has, both him and Jeff Goldblum only have one line in it. Of which, if you watch it, you you would never think that Jeff Goldblum would be the amazing actor he is today because he has one line, he blows it. I mean, it's it's trash. I, I was embarrassed for him every time I watched that, but it's not the point. So, Chris Walken has one line, and he sounds like a regular person in that line. 
but that's just one line, so maybe you can dismiss that. However, if you go to the original Hawaii Five O television series, you know, Book and Bano, mm-hmm. that that old show, if you go to season two, episode seventeen, which is called Run Johnny Run, Christopher Walken is the main character. It, it you know he is the impetus for the entire episode. So he has many lines throughout the entire episode, and he speaks in a completely normal voice. It was one but of his what first... if he's acting the no, uh-uh. voice? It's because he wasn't famous yet, and he hadn't come up with the idea of uh, having his own little gimmicky way of talking. I don't know if I buy that, because well, have you ever seen Colin Farrell in a movie? Yes. Have you ever seen him in an interview? Yes. Can I not understand shit he says in an interview, because his accent is so thick. Right. But in movies, he speaks perfect American. Yeah, yeah but you mean. But if you well, no, if but you've ever... American accent. If you ever seen Christopher Walken in anything, other than whatever he's speaking of, he's always got that same manner of speaking. Yeah. I know what he's he talking puts, about. So I'm just saying. It's not like it's it's not like it's a hidden like Stringer Bell. What's his real name? Oh, uh, Idra, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Elba yeah, uh-huh. Idris Elba, the yeah. most British sum gun yeah. you ever ever wanted to hear talk. But in the wire. <laughs> You would never even know he was from the UK. Not even close. Right. Yeah, but I'm not talking about hiding an accent. I'm talking about his inflection. You know, how he stresses the wrong syllables. Yes. And all that kind of stuff. Yes. I mean... I want you to do an imitation. I, can't, I know, I know you do. Well. I know you do, but... It's, I know. I, I mean, want to do I mean, one, too, but I can't. Unfortunately, I can't <laughs> do imitations. I can't do it. I got no Rosetta Stone. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one of the things that I regret about my life is I can't do imitations. But, well, if uh, you could show me a home movie, then I would buy it. I don't have to show you home. I'm telling you, go to season two, episode seventeen of Hawaii Five O, and you. But don't... he was acting, so that doesn't convince. Oh, but that was before he blew God. up, though. That's what he's saying. That's what I'm trying to say. He wasn't famous yet, and I think he realized, hey, I come up with a little gimmick on how I talk, and he helped me become famous. Which, hey, it works. It I'm works. But I'm just saying, I think he's full of it. I, I don't think that is how he speaks in real life. So don't take my word for it. Watch the episode. See what you think. Watch the no. episode. See what you think. No. Yeah, me neither. Because Chris I'm not is really recommending it. it. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not recommending it. No, no, I'm not recommending it. Because Hawaii Five-0 was horrible. Yeah. Woo. He's yeah. got a conspiracy theory. Right. I do have a conspiracy theory. Yes. Yeah, I'm putting and it out his there. His conspiracy theory is that John Malkovich, <laughs> John. <laughs> Christopher Walken, does not speak like that. He does not speak like that. <laughs> you sound like well, Captain Kirk. I, I was just saying, I was like Shatner. Oh, did I do Captain Kirk? Yes. I'm going to have to remember that for when somebody says do an impression. I'm going to yeah. do Captain Kirk. Yeah, you clearly can't do impressions. See, I can't do it either, but I'm not going to half-ass attempt and embarrass myself. So. Oh, I don't care. I'm not afraid to embarrass myself. Ask anybody. I do it all the time. Yeah, phew. I know me too. <laughs> I wear costumes for Halloween. It is Halloween, and we haven't spoken... About Halloween, it's not probably not actually Halloween. No, not yet. No, we still no. It's uh, we have another. You know, it's late in October. Yeah, and uh, yeah. we haven't spoken about the Halloween treatment. I like to wear costumes. We went to a homecoming pep rally for Tanner today, and uh, I remembered back when I was a senior in high school, we did a pep rally similar to that, and I dressed like the homecoming court from the other team. Uh, one of their homecoming queens. I was dressed in a dress <laughs> with uh, a nice long hair wig and some lipstick. Do was... you have some fake boobies? No, I didn't fit in the dress because I was uh, a big boy gotcha. and there wasn't a whole lot of girls that had dresses that they could loan me and I certainly wasn't buying a dress right. for 10 minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. So I wore whatever I had and it was just snugged up so my I man gotcha. boobs were the only boobs I had. Heard. But it worked. It was fun. So I remember that being a costume that I wore. You have any costumes that you? Well, I mean, when I, wore? When, I, well, when I grew up, I mean, I just wore the old cheapy, you know. But uh, before we talk about the shitty costumes, I do actually have a funny costume story. So this guy's a genius, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, you're gonna immediately dress like this guy did. This, this guy. I, mean, I promise you. I, I, like I, don't know the, I, don't know the, I don't know the guy's name. We don't know I don't the know guy's name. name. Just random guy. The guy's just a genius. I don't know what his IQ is, but it is up there. So We can call him Ted. Should we call him Ted? We'll call him Ted. Ted. We'll call him Ted. So many years ago when we lived in Virginia, Angie and I went to this big ass Halloween party, a whole bunch of people. I mean, it wasn't just, it was just a, just a Halloween party. It wasn't like our friends invited us or anything like that. It was just a whole bunch of people we didn't know. 
They crashed the party. No, 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 we didn't crash. No, party. we didn't crash. No, the we, party. Were invited, we were invited. We were invited, but it was just it was a bunch of people that we didn't know. It wasn't just like you know. It so, wasn't just our close friends. It was like a bunch of different. people. So this guy, so everybody's dressed up. You know, it's a Halloween party. You had to dress up, so everybody's dressed up in costumes. <clears throat> and this guy comes in. Oh, this is amazing. So uh, he's dressed up like a doctor. He's wearing scrubs. He's got the stethoscope. You know. He's got a cardboard box placed over his head, sitting on his shoulders, and he's got the front completely cut out so you can see his face and everything. And he's got a sign on top of the box that says, free mammograms. Okay? That guy had so many titties in his <laughs> face, I can't even tell you. I, I well, just, it had the cutouts for you to put your boobs I mean, on the thing. Genius. I, I couldn't believe how many women were like, here you go, boom! Boom! You know? I mean, I couldn't believe it. This, but unfortunately, I was married when yeah. I finally discovered Ted. Ted was a yeah, good Ted guy. Yeah, Ted is a great guy, yeah. He Way dressed go, up as Hugh Hefner. Yeah, but that's not the same. I did dress up as Hugh Hefner that, that, that time, but that did not count. <laughs> I, the girls weren't walking up to me no, asking me a motorbike. Hey, yeah. yeah. Man, I would like to be your bunny. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, that did not happen. Yeah. Free mammograms. Yep. That's genius. Genius. Love it. I just want to say. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Pretty slick move. What do you think, honey? Yeah, he, he was so genius. Chris doesn't even know his name. Ted. Ted is his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't worry about his name. <laughs> <laughs> his name is not relevant to the fact that he had dozens of titty shoved in his face. Dozens. Dozens. It was a lot. Which is it at least a, every six time, women. Every time. <laughs> no, it, I mean, at least. Unless it was a baker's dozen. <laughs> Which we've already figured out. We don't know what that is. <laughs> no, we do. The third we titty do. right there in the middle. <laughs> don't, uh, act like, don't act like you're not jealous that you didn't think of it. Because I am. I'm jealous every year. I, I would have I would have worn it. I would have checked it out. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have had the luck that Ted had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I'm, yeah. Ted must have been a good looking guy. I guess. Inside the box. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I didn't remember him being that good I don't, Yeah, I don't really remember that either, but... I just remember going, oh my God. Ridiculous. I just, I just remember going, genius. Yeah. Genius. There. This costume was talked about all yep. night. Yep. Anyway, but yeah, but I don't have any particular... I, I didn't dress up any, anything cool like that. Uh, Hugh Hefner, you I said mean, you I was Hugh Hefner, Hefner, but I didn't get titties thrown in my yeah, face. Yeah, but, but what? I mean, what? What is the coolest costume? Did you dress up in a costume for Halloween? Yeah, I wore a dress one time and said I was a princess. Like it's just a long dress because I don't like holidays. Oh, <laughs> yes, we forget you are a sour stick in the mud. <laughs> yes. Anything fun, she does not enjoy. I like Name it. something fun. I don't care what it is. Off the top of your head. I promise you, she doesn't like it. Fireworks. Nope. Hates it. Can't stand it. I do hate nope. fireworks. Oh, my God. Really? I can't who, who else got something? What Anything. The hell? Doesn't matter we what had it is. the most epic what the firework hell? story oh, you don't ever. The, you don't remember the time I almost blew We almost kill each other? We do. Oh, she, didn't, she doesn't like it. Yes, that's another reason I hate fireworks, because mm -hmm. you... I remember. Not, it, it was, was great. The, it was I had a great time. So, so we were having a. Yeah, I was, I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I'm not gonna lie to you. The story what? illustrates how much. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, this podcast can operate with three people. I just want to put that out there. So she's claiming that it is not a past tense. Yeah, that is what she's claiming. That is what she's claiming. So uh, it was New Year's, mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, I guess. And we were uh, we had we were having a big bonfire, and uh, so we went <clears throat> that morning. We bought a shit ton of fireworks, and the good kind, not the not the shitty. You, oh no, you, yeah, you know, I remember, no, yeah. it was the like, it, yeah, it was the yeah real fireworks. When you mm -hmm. shoot them up in there. So you know they come in the tube, little plastic tube, mm -hmm. it sets up right itself. You light the firework. It usually it's like a, it's a little uh, ball. Mm -hmm. You light the fuse. You drop the ball, boom. and the thing in there shoots off. Boom! And, and, and like real firework. Correct. Yes. Well, we didn't read the instructions that said that after you use the tube like three times, don't use the tube anymore because you know the firework shooting out melts. The flames melt the uh, plastic stand on the tube up. 
So no. I don't know how many fouls she shot out of that one, oh, yeah. too. It was a bunch. It was many. I remember we were loading like two and three balls <laughs> yeah, in the we were, same yeah, tube we were trying, and then lighting them yeah, all we at were, the same time. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were, yeah. <laughs> now you need to set the scene because it was like four couples out there. Yep, yeah. And I had a few toddlers at least. So, I mean, there's like five, a couple of five year olds and some maybe yep. four, three year olds out there. So, yep. I mean, there were neighbors it's, that it's came out. It's a busy out. yard yeah. at the time. Yeah, neighbors came out because we were shooting big fireworks and they right. to watch them. And so, there was a lot of people out there. Yeah. And the, and the bonfire was pretty good. It was pretty large, too. So, finally, at some point, I, I like everybody standing around the fire. And I'm away from it lighting. It was my turn to light the, the fireworks. So I'm at the tube lighting fireworks. So I, I light I light the fuse, drop the drop the firework in. And as soon as it hits the bottom, the tube just falls flat over. Point, it just falls flat on the ground. Pointing, pointing the straight house. at the fire. No, pointing <laughs> at the fire. So I was like, do I want to reach down and try to set the firework back up and then blow my fingers off? <laughs> and then try to explain why it was a good idea for me to do that? Nope. Oh, well, everybody's on yeah, their own. Just run. So I was like, everybody's on their own. So I just screamed out, run. <laughs> no, it was and, everybody move. <laughs> so the fireworks shoots off. It was actually pretty amazing. It, it was before cell phones, unfortunately, so this is not recorded. But So the fireworks shoots off uh, out of the tube, and it, and it hovers like, I don't know, half, you know, half a foot off the ground, goes for the fire, blows up. And then everybody's like covered in little sparkles. It's like the like the natural Robin Redford and the natural. It's just all these sparkles. It actually turned out to be pretty amazing. Yeah, it was. But, pretty but cool. it could have been. But we were been. all taking cover behind cars and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. what didn't it like shoot a few first? So it, like I it, can't, yeah. it. I remember it hit a tree. It turned like in different. Every time it shot, right, it, must it had turned in a different. One, yeah. Must yeah. Have had multiple ones in the tree. And then it again, did but, the final yeah. big one. Yeah. I just remember it was awesome though when it actually happened that nobody got hurt. Yeah. Because we did we did not know when it was gonna. Yeah. Oh, your mom was so like, mad. Yeah, We're my mom was kids, not happy. She taking was, cover. She was not proud of her son at that point. <laughs> it happens. You you know? Know? It does happen. It does happen. You but fireworks say? are fun, right? They are. Yep. So much fun. A kid always gets burned. There you go. There's the there's the attitude of sour stick <laughs> in the mud. I like sparklers. Sparklers are great. That's normally what. Oh yeah, but burn. we always yeah. burned all our children with all those sparklers. Did the you? Oh, burned. every time. They would be playing with them, and then the fire would go out, and they'd be like, oh, and then they'd just grab the thing, and oh, they yeah. got a line burned across their hand. Just because what? it's not actively burning anymore it doesn't mean that it's not 4,000 degrees. Because when Dakota you know? didn't hear, mm-hmm. right, and of course we didn't have his processor on because my son is hearing impaired, by the way. He has a cochlear implant. When he was younger, the fireworks were too loud, so we didn't. he didn't wear it mm-hmm. when we were having the fireworks. So when he first was introduced to sparklers, we couldn't tell him, you know, it was too hot because it was dark. He couldn't use sign language and he couldn't hear. So he just freaking grabbed the end of the sparkler and burned his freaking hand. Mm-hmm. His little, his little thumb and his pinky like that. That's how he grabbed oh, it. Oh, yeah. Burned right through. Ouch. Ow. Yow. Poor little kid. Well, you got to learn somehow. But he, man, we had many trips with him. He knocked his four front teeth out. He knocked he had staples in his head, stitches in his head. He had zero fear, dude. He was jumping off of the roof of the house onto a trampoline when he was like five. Yeah, your little bird cage. Yes. He climbed up on top of that, on top of the roof, went all the way to the end of the roof and jumped onto the trampoline. Well, it sounds to me like uh, he should have had parents looking out for him. Uh, he was pushing <laughs> chairs to the door the to aunt? unlock the chain. And? And he was only three. Well, if his parents were watching him, he couldn't have done those well, things. Well, you know, we got to sleep sometimes. <laughs> Correct. That is accurate. That is an accurate statement. <laughs> yeah. Reason to that Well, I, I've five. never had kids, so I can criticize how other people raise them because I didn't screw up. It well, was not just, easy. He just graduated from Aveda, so I'd say we did okay. We did all right. Yeah. He's Yay. a good kid. He's got all his fingers and all his toes. <laughs> well, that's Luckily. True. That's true. Yeah. Luckily. I don't know how he made it with those, to be honest. <laughs> Whew. What you got now? Yeah, I know. Well, well, oh, you know what? Uh, why don't you give us an update? The update you promised us several episodes ago. Are we doing Taylor Shabusiness? Yes. So, clearly, she was found guilty. But wait, you got to remind us who Taylor Shabusiness is, because people don't just keep that name in their heads like we do. 
Oh, if y'all don't know who Taylor Shabiznis is, you really missed out. Um, it's the podcast favorite necrophiliac. Yes. Right. Yeah, Taylor okay. Shabiznis yes. okay. was found guilty for um, murdering her lover, cutting him up, sexually abusing his corpse. Um, I mean, all kind of stuff. Uh, she also attacked her lawyer. Oh, yeah, but he didn't press charges, so he just got mm. off the case and she got a new lawyer. Uh, anyway, so she went to court for sentencing because they uh, found her guilty, um, but not by reason of insanity. They found her completely sane, knowing what she was doing at the time. And the judge sentenced her to life with no parole and no... Um, Supervision. I think. I think there was some kind of uh, release on it where you could get like supervised visits or something. But she got nothing. She got life. Period. Right. right. Uh, yeah. Which I thought was funny that her lawyer asked for the time served to uh, oh. to be. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, to be, I, know, I, I saw that too. Yeah. He asked Concurrent. for the time served. No. He asked for time served to be accounted for. That she get credit for the time she has already served. But I know what that's for because she's appealing the sentencing. So mm -hmm. if she would get a lesser sentence, then she would have credit for the time she has already spent in jail. So that's why he asked for that oh. time served to be counted for. What was really interesting to me is that if you know anything about the court system, when they do sentencing hearings is when there's time for victim statements and mm -hmm. then the defendant can actually also address the court as well. Right. So they did the victim statements, and the victim's father stood up and addressed the court and said that he has forgiven Taylor for what she has done to his son, and that he believes that the court should be lenient on her and allow her the opportunity for parole down the road. And this is the guy's dad. Yeah, who that, had his head cut off. That, that to me was shocking. Right. That yeah, that took me back as well because I, I don't have the uh, I'll, I'll forgive you. No, no, attitude. no, I, no. I don't understand that. No, I me. Don't either. Understand. I would be saying I want your head in a bucket. Right. That's what I want. Right. I want uh, your head in a bucket. I mean, and then I want to bring it to your mother. Right. So he woke up. <laughs> he woke up and he said, "You know, she dismembered my son, bathed in his blood." And then had sex with his corpse. Right. But, but let's let bygones be bygones. Yeah, yeah. I forgive you. Maybe yeah. he's afraid of her. She's, she kind of looks like a witch. Maybe he's afraid she would, you know, do something. And the worst, the most tragic part about it is that this kid's mom had to find his head in a five-gallon bucket, right? It was a 10-gallon bucket. I didn't even know there was a 10 gallon bucket. Me either until yep, today. Yep, it was a 10-gallon bucket. They said bucket. it was a 10 gallon bucket. Yeah, they did say that. Well, they needed wow. room for his penis. Well, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. They needed that extra two inches. Yeah. But you know, the judge, <laughs> <laughs> the judge asked her, like, would you like to make a statement? And she went, nope. Yeah. And that was it. Well, what the hell she was going to say? Well, most people ask for leniency or say, I'm sorry. or But nope, yeah, she had zero remorse. to say. Right. Zero. Yep. Appeal on yep. the court's empathy, yep. you know, something. Nope, she said, I don't have nothing to say. Oh, and they had to, uh, they had to put a spit hood on her. Yeah. We were discussing that, me and Bodie, um, because obviously they put the spit hood if they're worried about you spitting on like officers and stuff. But I was wondering if the lawyer made them put that on her so that the judge couldn't see her smirking like she did the whole trial. Right, which would have been very right. smart. Right. right. If, that, no, if the yeah. lawyer thought about that, because in the previous, during the trial, when you're looking at her face, the smirks on her face were right. unreal. Like yes. you could... This woman looked like a crazy person. Right. And laughing and giggling when they talked about some of the details of the murder. And you think maybe the lawyer might want to cover up some of those facial gestures. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought maybe that was a good idea for him to have put that hood on her. Because we didn't hear anything about her spitting on anyone. No, but he, I mean, also it could have protected him from biting. Because, you know, she did attack her lawyer at one point. So maybe he sure. thought she ain't got nothing left to lose. One right. last little... Right, just in case, yeah. whenever she gets yeah. told she got life in prison, you know, just in case she bucks up. Yeah. yeah. I, I just find it odd, the timing. Like, because he he really did a good job speaking for her to ask mm -hmm. for leniency and everything. I right. mean, I know that's his job, but 
to me that would be hard to do. Yeah. And but he re- he really did a good job with that. And so I'm just wondering possibly if like you know like we said the lawyer advised it because no judge is gonna look at that face and think she deserves leniency down the line. There's no way she was gonna get leniency. But no. I'm, just, I'm just surprised because you can't. You can't. No, that's uh, yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that They're can't. in Wisconsin, and the, the prosecutor even said this is the worst possible crime that has ever come through this court in the last 50 years. Yep. You cannot give anything less than what the book demands, you know? Right. I mean, they, they couldn't. They really couldn't, honestly. What, what amazed me the most is when I saw the split hood was from everything I knew about it, I would have swore she swallowed. <laughs> so, I, I, so apparently I was wrong. She went the other way. She was going the other way, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, surprise. she definitely that is a was spitter. A, and that's yeah. when I, I texted my wife and said, oh, yeah, she's a spitter. You wouldn't think she was a spitter, but she's a spitter. Because yeah. <laughs> she didn't know what it was at first. She said, what is that thing she's wearing on her face? I said, oh, she's a spitter. <laughs> but you had her pegged as a swallower. I did, yeah, from from everything I learned about her from the trial. <laughs> but I guess I was wrong. I guess I don't know everything. Oh, my gosh. But that's her update. And she will be spending the rest of her life in prison without possibility of parole. Correct. I like it. That's where it should be. No, that's, yep. Well, except for the taxpayer expense, right. honestly. We right. should be able just to electrocute her. Yeah, <laughs> right away. And be done. No, that's right. Firing squad, hanging. Yeah, bring whatever, them back. Whatever bring them back. Yep. Right. Get it over with. <sighs> well, Jeffrey Dahmer only lasted, what, a year? Mm-hmm. So- oh, yeah. One of the uncles, I think, stood up in the victim statements and mentioned her idolatry of Jeffrey Dahmer and said, I hope you end up just like him. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. And that's the kind of victim statement you expect. Right. right. That's right. That's the right. dad just threw yeah, me that's, He blew that, me yeah, away. Yeah, I know. That blew me away, too, when I heard that. I was like, what? <laughs> Unless he just didn't like his son. I don't know, which I guess is possible. <laughs> I don't know. His name was Shad, like a fish. Right, I know. They clearly didn't like him. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Crazy. We don't want to start on people's names. Why? What's wrong with my name? Not yours. <laughs> yeah, she has never gotten over the fact that she is named after the the exorcist. The exorcist. Yeah. yeah. And I think the new exorcist looks like to me. If you've seen the trailer for the new exorcist, I, I think it's going to be cool. I have, but I mean, it's poo-poo. just me. I'm going on record. Absolute poo poo. Yeah, and watch, he just by the it. fact that he said poo poo means it's going to be freaking excellent. Okay. Well, well, not necessarily. Enjoy it. Enjoy what it. you mean? He said it's poo-poo. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean it will be excellent. If he says it's excellent, what is it? Shit. <laughs> and so by inverse, if he says it's poo-poo, what is it? No, it's just, okay. you don't understand. You're, you're not playing. <laughs> you don't know the game. <laughs> we did watch The Exorcist the other night, though. Yeah. Oh, the, the old one? You yeah. watched it? No, no. Yeah, she said no, we. No, I can't but, watch but The But by we, the she meant me. The Exorcist is one of the movies that, amazingly, I can watch. Now, when they redid it, where she comes down the stairs yeah. like a spider. What do you mean, redid it? That was in the original. No, it wasn't. No, what? That's from the, her yeah, coming down the stairs was not yep, in the her original. Her coming down the stairs, uh, like that backwards crab, spider, spider walking deal. Was, was not in the original. That oh, that's the, original. the only one I saw. Yep, that was not in the original. No, that's not true. Is that's, that the one you saw? That's not the only one you saw. Uh, you saw it when you were a little kid. No, I never saw it. I oh didn't see my it God! I am, years tired, old. I am tired of telling stories. From I was my too scared to age. watch it. Okay, okay, all right. Because I thought I was going to be that. I was named after it. Right, right. Okay. I don't know which one I saw because it, I had to see it no, through, through my fingertips. You, you did not. <laughs> you saw the original theatrical cut. I have no you idea because yeah. I was watching through yeah. my fingers. He just said theatr- original theatrical, which is an oxymoron because they're no. saying original and then they're saying theatrical. Dude. And now it's original theatrical. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, what? actually, okay. There's been an original cut of it. No, no. no. When I say oh, excuse ori- me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please proceed. Well, I'm just saying. Marriage counseling 2.0. Yeah, do, we, do we need marriage hey. therapy? No, because no, I ignore him. So. First of all, the theatrical cut is the original. And uh, that is the version that you've all seen. The theatrical cut is the original. Yes. But then they went in and they re what is it remastered it or something? Well, kind of like how they did Star Wars. They, they re-released they added it in theaters. Scene, they re-released and they it. added scenes to it. Yeah. Well, when I was in college at eighteen, okay. that's when I saw it. Okay. All right. All right. On a video. And what year was that? Nineteen seventy-three. Oh, 
in 90. 1993. This is when I saw it. Hmm. It came out in 74 yeah. or 73, maybe. It came out in Christmas Boy. You want to hear something weird uh, about the Hollywood system? This is, why, this is one of the reasons why Hollywood sucks. So, The Exorcist came out in the 70s. I can't remember exactly what year. I just told you 73 or 74. Okay. It's one of okay. those two years. So, they are, have made the movie and they're uh, sitting down, having a meeting with studio executives about trying to come up with a tagline for the movie. Okay, because every movie has a tagline. So one of the studio executives says that he thinks the tagline should be, for God's sake, someone help her. <laughs> right, exactly. Of which William Freakin, the director of the movie, was like, there's no fucking way we're going to use that shitty tagline for this movie. Right. So he, he somehow had the power to override the studio executive and didn't use it, okay? So that's in 73 or 74. The movie, um, The Exorcism of Emily Rose... Which came out uh, like what, 2014? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, so several years ago. Okay. Guess what the tagline for that movie is? For God's sake, someone else. Yep. Really? Yeah, I swear to you. So <laughs> they fucking held on to that tagline for all those years. I thought that tagline, God damn it, we're going to use it in Exorcism movies. So they held it on for decades, waiting to override a director who didn't have the power to stand up to the studio executives and use it. And that, that's insane to me. So what was the tagline for The Exorcist? Oh my God! I can't believe you asked me that because now I can't remember. Oh, you can't remember I can't something remember, yeah. about a movie? Yep, I cannot remember the original. So, look Exorcist. it up. Look it up. Right, uh, I, somebody. I think it was just the Exorcist. There was no tagline. I mean, I don't. I, I think don't remember every there movie being any tagline. I don't remember there being anything that was uh, memorable that they said like. Every after. soul. Oh. Every soul is a battlefield. There it is. I think every, every soul time. is a battlefield. Yeah. yeah, I thought it'd be like, it'll make your head turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm looking it up. Yeah, I think every movie has a tagline, I want to say. But anyway, so I just want to point that out because I just thought that was, because I just watched Exodus not long ago, and I just thought that was an interesting little tidbit, which just highlights how fucking moronic the studio system is. So. Well... Speaking of the Exorcist, I think we should watch the new one. I think everyone should check it out. I think I'm gonna watch it, even though I don't like to be scared. So that's we're interesting have that, to that see. Uh, yeah, after you proclaimed how badly that movie fucked you up, that you want to watch the sequel. It is. It is silly. I'm feeling rather S and M ish, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they made several they made several Exorcist sequels actually, and they're all poo poo except for right. the third one. The no, third one is not poo poo. That's uh, got George C. Scott. In yeah, it, right? George C. Scott's in it, and uh, it, um, it was actually uh, directed by uh, William Peter Blatty, who wrote the novel of the original that the Exorcist is based on. So he wrote it and directed it himself. So the author himself directed the movie, and I think that's the only Exorcist sequel anyone should watch. So I'm going to kind of take this on a slight tangent. Uh -huh. So, you know how... Tangentially. <laughs> you know how, like, in the movie, the priests and stuff smoke and all that kind yes. of stuff? Yes, yes. So I didn't realize that, like, um, priests drink and stuff. Like, now. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that. They oh, they, you thought like, they were not people. No, no, I mean, I didn't know <laughs> thought they, they were, were religious. allowed you know to. What else? Yeah, you thought they were religious. You know what else, drunk. You know what else they do? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody knows. I don't have to say it. Right. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, I thought I was going to have some breaking news, but okay, everybody knows. Right. All right. <laughs> We're not yeah. opening that ball of wax. Now, I just, I was, I really did not. Yeah. So you didn't know. No, they cut loose like that. You didn't know. <laughs> I did not. Have you ever been to church? A Catholic church? Yeah. You know how they sit up there with a big, huge glass of wine before the whole congregation? Yeah. You notice how they take like 72 sips of that wine, but every person in there only gets one? <laughs> and then when they're finished, they chug the whole rest of the glass and then wipe it off with the little napkin? You, you thought that that I've was only accidental? I've been to Catholic church funerals. <laughs> I, thought they, I thought the congregation or whoever didn't drink the wine. I thought they just got the bread stuff. Mm, oh, that may be the I way they're doing the it now. Yeah, I think you might be right. I'm not Catholic, so because I don't know. then everybody would be drinking out the same thing. Whereas with the bread, they put it on the tongue. 
Mm-hmm. The priest mm-hmm. puts it. So each or you can put it in their piece. hand, like if they walk around. Right, right, yeah, if they yeah, don't yeah, want yeah. you to right. touch their mouth. Yeah, don't, don't Baptists put your fingers get little in my glasses mouth. Yeah. of grape juice. No, we, yeah, in in our church, we also had the little cups of grape juice. So, yeah. and a cracker, you, you know, picked off a little piece. And funny yeah. story. It's not really funny. I, I, it might not be funny to some people, but when I was very young, my grandmother passed away, and she was Catholic. My whole extended family is all Roman Catholic. And when we went to her funeral service, I was, I don't even know how old I was, maybe eight, right? Um, And that's just a guess. But while they were uh, doing the funeral service, they did a holy rosary. And so they were saying the rosary, Hail Mary, full of grace, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah, that's about all I knew. So... They had repeated several times, and I thought that I had picked it up, so I said, hey, let me join in. And I was saying, <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, fruit of the loom, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were talking about some fruit of the looms, you know, and I just kept saying, fruit of the loom, fruit of the loom. So my sister and I kind of make fun about that a little bit, even to this day, and we say fruit of the loom. <laughs> it's probably blasphemous to, you know, those who are really religious in the Catholic religion, but it was just what I thought as a young child, and I thought it was pretty funny. Actually, it's a little amusing, yeah. Fruit of the Lord Slightly Jesus. Amusing. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you know, religion is a hot topic with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get off that religion topic. Uh, did you know that, um, oh, what the hell, the, god damn it, I have COVID brain. I can't ever remember people's names. The fucking girl that was played Reagan, uh, Oh, what the hell is her name? Uh, Melinda, Belinda, Brenda, no, Blair. 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 Blair, Linda Blair, Blair. Linda Blair, yeah, Linda well, Blair. Close. Linda you Blair actually scary. made a Exorcist spoof movie. Oh yeah, which is I terrible. That. It's called Repossess. It's terrible. There's only a couple of funny jokes in the whole thing. Leslie Nielsen's in it, so I, I thought it would be funny, but. And not, there you go. That's why it wouldn't be not, funny because no. Leslie Nielsen. No, 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 no. Yeah. Naked Gun. Yeah, you. I beg to differ. Police Squad. Yeah. Yes. You, oh my God. Yes. Airplane. I went saw with Chris when he lived in Virginia. Airplane. Like Naked Gun yeah. thirty three and a third yes. or something. Yes, you did. And yes. Electricity went off in the middle of the movie, and so we had to go outside, and they thought you know it might come on or whatever. So we waited like fifteen minutes, and then they decided. It wasn't coming back on, so they gave everybody their money back. And I was so glad that I didn't have to sit through the rest of that movie. <laughs> you were you were happy yes. that so, electricity was going. I like that movie. I actually so, like that movie. So uh, you just expressed to everybody that I have terrible taste in movies, and then said that the Naked Gun movies aren't funny. So let's weigh this, gentlemen. right? But uh, see, that's one opinion. But I agree with you. I also don't think that all of your movie taste is terrible. We agree on a lot of movies that were really good. Right. For some reason, these obscure recommendations that are from the basement that you're trying to get other people to watch, they're pure fucking doo-doo. It's like he wants to have his own (laughs) film festival, right? He would like that. I would. I would like to have my own film festival. But we do agree on a lot of things. Yeah. It's not like... But I mean, I'm not going to recommend, you know, Saving Private Ryan. Sure. Because those are movies Everybody sees. Everybody knows about. Sure. Sure. I get that. You say everybody, but we are really trying to reach a broad range of age. And like my daughter, Tanner, has never seen Saving Private Ryan. Well, I blame you. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. I can't introduce her to everything. Well, music. hey, I got a friend. I worked on music with her. I got a friend that listens to the podcast okay. regularly. All right. And he texted me the other day and told me that he was very glad that I said the movie Goonies. He was happy that I put okay. that in my, right. in my list. I, I like Goonies. Because Goonies is classic. It is. Yep. He also gave me a list of his movies. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to look for them and yes. read them to you. All because right. I don't, I, there was two of them that I didn't get to see. Okay. Or that I have never seen, right? All right. I, I wanted to tell you that before. His his list, my uh, buddy from Michigan has a list of five. Mac, shout out, Mac. Thanks for hey, listening, man. buddy. Yep, we appreciate it. He's got a list of five. Empire of the Sun, 1987. Yeah, yeah Steve Spielberg movie. That's a very. Gone in 60 seconds, however. 1974. The, the original. Yes. Okay. I never knew there was a 1974. Okay. 
So you know that there I do is know, an older... I do know of it. I have not seen it, but I am aware of it. Really? Yes. Okay. Equilibrium, 2002? Yes, I have not seen it. Yeah. Fight Club, Brad Pitt, obviously. Sure. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic Love movie. It. Love it. And this one, Last Man Standing, 1996. Oh, oh no, Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have that movie. Yeah. So I so I haven't seen uh, Equilibrium or Empire of the Sun. Okay. Empire of the Sun is very emotional. Empire of the Sun is uh, I have not seen Equilibrium, so I really can't comment on it. But Empire of the Sun is Christian Bale. I think it might have even been his first movie. He's just a little kid. Yeah, really. And yeah. Uh, it's a Steven Spielberg movie. It's about um, World War Two, and uh, it's um, when the Japanese take over uh, Shanghai, I believe. And um, what happens is that Christian Bale, of course, I don't know how old he's supposed to be in the movie. He's like, you know, nine or some shit. And he gets uh, separated from his parents. They're, they're evacuating the city. And in the chaos, he gets he gets left behind. And so it's just about, uh, it's a long movie. So it was like fucking three hours long. So it, he, you know, it's about him trying to survive on his own as a kid. And then getting put in a concentration camp and how he survives in a concentration camp, you know, until eventually he gets rescued and all this kind of stuff. I mean, awesome. it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. Uh, it is a good movie. Um, it's not. It's not something where you're like, "Oh, I gotta watch that movie again." Hmm. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not. It like, is a very good. It's movie not though. rewatchable. Like I just constantly gotta watch it by something. But it is definitely a good movie. I mean, Spielberg. You know, Malkovich. I, is I in was it. blown yeah, John away. Malkovich there was a, is in it. There was yeah. a going in sixty seconds from nineteen seventy four. I was like, "What is that? Why the hell are you blown away? Like that is because all Hollywood I never does. Knew. Yeah. I never knew that was a thing. That's all Hollywood does. Well, that's they why just they just remake hell. everything all over again. That's why the hell I'm here. Is to dig into the basement and reveal things like this. Right. People don't know. But you right. didn't reveal it. Well, His no. friend Mac did. Well, That's see, right. Well, Why because, didn't you tell me well, before my buddy told me? I didn't actually watch that movie. I only reckon movies that I've seen, and I can say for sure that I have enjoyed. <laughs> he didn't like the Nicolas Cage Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, I did not I did not like the Nicolas Cage Gone in 60 Seconds. I did not like it. That is correct. Really? But that's not the movie he's referring to. Right? No, that's right. not the that's one he was referring yeah. to. But I He made the sure to put 1974. Right. yeah. Which, right. which well, maybe the seven four one's awesome. I mean, highly we awesome. have to check it out. Have yeah. you yeah. seen it? No, we we, we right. will. Let's fucking. We will watch definitely it. do yep. a screening of that for you, Mac. We'll watch. Appreciate well, the well, input. All four of us will watch it, and then we'll just give our review. There you uh, go. On an upcoming episode. I like it. Yep. I like it a lot. Yeah. Dun dun dun. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you want to? Did you want to oh, talk about the uh, the? Uh, the <laughs> I don't know how it relates to anything. It doesn't. It doesn't it relate to anything. It is this tangentially. Podcast, this, this podcast <laughs> just jumps from one topic to the other. We like to keep listeners guessing. So I was watching some YouTube information or something the other day. I love YouTube, by the way. You're going to yeah. hear me reference YouTube probably 5,000 times because I will watch YouTube all day long. I don't have to watch cable TV. I don't have to have movies. I will watch YouTube all day long. Love it. I don't know why. It's Still just Chris. crazy. I'm addicted. Anyway, I was watching this YouTube, and there is an Iraqi farmer who was tending to his farm or whatever, and throughout the course of his duties, he used to get stung by scorpions all the time. One day, he got mad that he repetitively got stung by these scorpions, so he picked one up and ate it. He just ain't out of anger. For getting stung all the time. He just picked one up and ate it. Right. And now he has eaten them and chewed them and been stung so many times that he is addicted to the venom of the scorpion. And he has to have one like every three days or so or he will experience withdrawal symptoms from not ingesting the scorpion's venom. It's That's, crazy. It is insane. And there is a video of him just straight up just... Oh, just chewing, yep. chowing down on a yep. scorpion. A live one, too. Yeah. He just pops them in his mouth while they're live, and they sting him all inside the mouth, and he's just chewing them up. It's wild, That dude. shit is insane. Yeah, that we'll is share insane. the video yeah, on our Facebook Yeah, we will definitely, page. definitely post that video, because it is wacky. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. But I thought that that was pretty interesting anyway. No, it is interesting. That's what we're here for, to introduce interesting yeah, we want that... Yeah, we want our listeners to be able to pick up something that we saw and go check it out themselves. That's and right. be like, wow, that's, that's pretty right. cool. Right? So if drugs are bad, and that's kind of like a drug in nature, would that be bad? I think it is. I can't imagine how it's no, good for No, I can't him. imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> well, especially because he I wouldn't call that drugs. a drug in nature, because that's not intended to, to yeah, help people. Well, whatever it or, is, I can't imagine it's good. No. Right? I can't imagine that either. 
I also can't imagine getting stung by a scorpion and going, you know what? I'm going to fucking eat you. eat you, bitch. Yeah, I got tired that, of it. That would not be my reaction. No, I would stomp them. Yeah, exactly. Maybe light them on fire. Exactly. Or, yeah, I don't exactly. know. Whatever it yeah. takes to Anything make them else. hate life. Maybe shine a magnifying glass in their face until <laughs> they burst into flames. But at no point would I consider throwing it in my mouth and right. chewing. Right. <laughs> but we don't live in Iraq. No, nope, that's right. Yeah, that is correct. Pretty interesting. Yeah, check the video out. It's a short video, and it's just and we will post it. Yeah, we, we will, will definitely post it. So, all right. So well, let me go ahead and recommend another terrible movie. Apparently, I like it. I Yay. think it's a good idea. Can't wait to hear this one. Mm -hmm. Just this between one... me and you, though. Just as a side note, we are not watching it. No, okay. we're going to watch one of Max movies. Yeah, we're going to pull one of Max ones and <laughs> leave Chris's ones alone. Right. Okay. All right, my feelings will not be hurt. <laughs> so, this movie uh, came out in 2013, starring Anton Yelchin. Well, it hasn't been in the basement for that long. No, no. No, no. It's it's not really somebody it's I've not, never heard of. Yes, you know who Anton Yelchin is. He, uh, he played uh, Chekhov. And uh, the, the new, new Star, Star Trek. Trek. He played what? Check, check, check off. off in and the new Star check Trek. Off. Yeah. <laughs> check off. Well, you know, he likes to add check off. Well, uh, once you say it in And Captain I didn't Kirk see the new Star Wars. So, I, I so, mean, Star Trek. Trek. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know who you He wanted about. me to say it in my Captain Kirk voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> check off. So uh, the reason why you won't hear of Anton Yelchin is, unfortunately, because uh, I actually did enjoy him as an actor. I thought he was a good actor. He was killed... Um, and by accident. Yeah, he, uh, in a terrible way, uh, an, SUV, an SUV was, was parked horrible. in his driveway on, on a slant, and the brakes failed in the SUV. Like, it was just in park, I think, in fact, and uh, rolled back, pushed him up against a fence, pinned him down, and the weight of the vehicle suffocated him to death. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's just like signs. Yeah, crazy. That is. Yeah. No. In signs, no, no, the that's woman not, was actually yeah, cut in she half. She was cut in half, yes. That's yeah. correct. So it is nothing like that. She was like filmed that. in a way. <laughs> she was right. alive when she shouldn't have been. Yeah, that so, woman was cut in half. I love that movie, though. So he was killed. So he's, unfortunately, he's gone. But the movie is called Odd Thomas. Odd Thomas. We saw this. Did we? Yes. And you didn't like it. I don't think so. Oh, my God. I don't remember seeing That's, it. Carry on, Chris. So, Excuse the interruption. Right. So Odd Thomas, which is based on a series of books by Dean Koontz. Which I don't know how many he's written, but he's written several. Oh yes, uh, starring this character many, many, called Odd many, many. And uh, what happened was, um, it's directed by Stephen Somers, <clears throat> which I'm not really a fan of Stephen Somers uh, in general, but I do like he he directed that um, the Mummy remake with uh, Brendan Fraser. No, I like which I, like I which I like movies. that movie. I like that movie. What? And I like this movie, but all the rest of his movies, poo poo. But uh, so. Um, the plot of the movie is that uh, this guy uh, named Thomas. Everybody, well, his name is his name literally is Odd Thomas. His name is literally Odd Thomas, and uh, he's uh, has uh, psychic powers, so he can communicate with the dead, and you know he gets visions, all this kind of stuff. So, uh, and he also has the ability to see these strange monsters um, that. Called, or called Bodaks in the movie, and they are really interesting looking. Uh, they're hard yes. to they're hard to describe what they look like and how they move. They're very interesting. What they do is they're attracted to death, and so they like to like smell um, people who are going to die. This is a weird thing. So what happens is, uh, Odd Thomas um, sort of like he actually works with the chief of police of the town who knows that he's psychic, and they work together because you can't tell people that somebody's psychic and that's how they solve the case he, he actually works with them to help them solve murders and stuff and uh so they he helps them use his visions to solve murders and then they come up with a way of, of how they could have come across the evidence without using psychic right. abilities right sure so that's so that, so he's so he's uh uses his powers for good and then what happens is he gets a vision uh of some people getting killed and these bodax creatures that he sees he sees a whole bunch which he knows the more you see, it means the more people are going to be killed. So the movie becomes this uh, sort of detective story where he's trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen, you know, exactly what day it's going to happen so he can stop it. And, it, and uh, the movie sort of builds up into a race against time. You know, you got to stop it at the last second kind of kind of deal. 
So and the movie is very fast paced and has some really interesting concepts in it and uh, it really builds up to a really exciting ending. Odd Thomas. Check it out. It uh it actually I, I was surprised when I watched it. I watched it on, you know, cable or whatever. I, I don't know exactly what how I uh, watched it the first time, but it was I don't know why it wasn't released theatrically because it really is it, very well done. Oh yeah, Willem Dafoe is yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, Willem Dafoe's in it. Oh, yeah, so this it, is a straight to video I, it, movie? Yeah, yeah. And it, it was so popular that they were gonna make a sequel and then Anton Yelchin got killed. Wow. So they didn't make the sequel. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of a bummer because I would like to have seen where they where they were gonna go with it because it's it's a damn good movie. I mean it yeah, it starts and it just it's boom boom boom. It's non stop okay. the whole movie. So. It wrecked me. Yeah. Too bad he wasn't really psychic. Odd Thomas. Odd Thomas, yep. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, check it out. So, all right, we all we only have one more weekend left in October for the podcast. Mm-hmm. So one more horror movie I'll recommend. Uh, hell, maybe yeah. I'll recommend two. Maybe I'll do a a, a double feature recommendation on the last on the last one. Huh? Great, uh, he's yeah. gonna scare the few people that listen to Wade. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Hey, we uh, do appreciate yeah. you guys listening. Yeah. The repetitive listeners, we thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us a listen. Hope you're enjoying yourself and that you get a little laugh every now and then like we do. Make sure you hit those five stars and click that follow button on Spotify or whatever platform you're using. And, Facebook uh, X. Yeah, follow us on Facebook. Yeah, We try to post videos for every uh, episode. We try to post something related to the episode that we discuss every yep. week. So. I posted the list from last week. Yep, we only have a few more, uh, few more days, I guess, of... Uh, of uh, horror movies to be shown. The 31 Nights of Horror are almost over, unfortunately. Mm. But uh, I think it's been a pretty good year. Uh, good year. Yeah. You know what was a good year? 1973. Okay. Yep. That's the year you were born. Yep. That's, that's when yep. the, the earth received the greatest blessing. Chris? <laughs> you know what was another Our good buddy. year? Oh, buddy was born in 73 yep. as well? <laughs> yes. Oh, two blessings in one yeah. year. Yeah. You know what was another good year? What is another 1969. Good year? Oh, that's, that's just a good year just because. <laughs> what I hear. I hear it was, I wasn't there, but I hear it was amazing. I hear it was amazing. Well, All, right. All right. We made up. <laughs> Guys, Big Dog is out. All right. See y'all next week. Bye. Goodbye.